Yes, uh, greetings to everyone that is um, watching us right now. Uh, welcome to this session of Visa for Music, and we appreciate that you're tuned in and watching this session. The topic uh, for this session is living culture despite uh, the pandemic. So artists and culture actors in resilience. Uh, and with me, I have six amazing creatives from various uh, parts uh, of the continent. And I would like to welcome each one of them to introduce themselves to you before we can proceed. And I will start with uh, Melaku Bele from uh, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Melaku, go ahead. Um, as we wait for Melaku, uh, let's have uh, Gabriela Peppers from Durban, South Africa. Thanks, Herman. Hi, everybody. My name is Gabriela. Um, I'm zooming in from Durban, South Africa. We always call it the warmest place to be, even though it's a bit cloudy at the moment. Um, and I have been working in Durban for the past 10 years around the creative industries um, and really trying to showcase and highlight the amazing talent that we have, not just in Durban, but KZN and South Africa as a whole. So I work with a variety of young, talented creatives, um, predominantly in the music, but other creative fields. Um, and thank you for having me on this panel. I'm um, really looking forward to the discussion that's about to take place. And to you, uh, Philip Sitole, uh, who is also from Durban, South Africa. Yes, uh, good afternoon, or rather good evening. My name is Philip Sitole. I'm the deputy city manager at Etewini municipality, which is a local government uh, responsible for managing um, the city of Durban, which is a metropolitan city. Um, part of the work that I do, um, it's around economic development, but I'm also responsible for marketing the city as a destination um, for visitors, which is tourists as well as investors. So part of the work that I do I work with the create, people who are in the creative space in marketing the city of Devon. Artists being one of many of such people in that sector that I work with. Perfect. Um, and let's hear from Shabani Ramadani, who is from uh, Tanzania as well, uh, partially in Bujumbura, Burundi. Shabani. Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Shabani Ramadan. I am musician festival director from Marhaba Music Expo in Bojumbura. Yeah. Thank you very much. And to you, uh, Mela Kubele from uh, Addis, Ethiopia. Sorry, I'm uh, disappearing because technology. Uh, <laughs> sorry for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, my name is Malaku. I'm a dancer and uh, founder of Fandika Cultural Center and uh, uh, founder and president of the Ethiopian Dance Art Association. Thank you very much. Great. And uh, could we hear from Mike Dada uh, from Nigeria? Uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Mike Dada, uh, the president of All African Music Awards, Afrima. Um, I'm a lawyer, uh, I'm a marketing, public relations, advertising consultant with so much passion and bias for arts, culture, and music in Africa. Perfect. And uh... 
thanks for joining us, Mike. And Thank finally, so let's hear from uh, Chisoma Makonje from Malawi. Chisoma, to you. Okay, um, I think Chisoma will be joining us uh, soon. Um, yeah, so to start uh, this session, um, we are saying that during uh, the uncertain periods, artists and cultural actors or practitioners have had to reinvent uh, themselves and create new modes of creation uh, and dissemination. So, We'll, we are going to be discussing the difficulties that we've all encountered or that you've all encountered uh, and the means you've put in place to overcome that. So starting uh, with, um, I guess let's start with uh, Melako. Uh, we'd like to know from your part, you know, what difficulties have you found as an artist, as a cultural practitioner running uh, Fendika as well? Um, and what means have you put in place to overcome those difficulties? Or maybe let's start with difficulties first before we get to the means. Thank you very much. Uh... So, uh, uh, yeah, it's difficult from where to start, but because a uh, human being, we never stop complaining. <laughs> so, but the, the, the art, uh, uh, is, uh, is now critics time because of uh, COVID-19. Uh, in Ethiopia, uh, there is no support from government for art. Uh, nothing is zero. So uh, mostly artists uh, surviving nightclub or some performance and stuff. So all is uh, shut down. Uh, no insurance, no nothing is you can imagine. An amazing legend, an amazing. So the first one, very dangerous time for artists. The rest they have from government or salary or from the hotel or salary and stuff. But musician, when they stop to perform, is a stop income, and very uh, difficult here. So, uh, especially, I can prove because uh, my, here uh, I have nightclub in Fendika Cultural Center. Every night is music. Uh, we have uh, traditional folklore, acoustic called asmari. Uh, uh, we have uh, jazz, original arrangement. I have my own band called Ethio Color, original arrangement and poetry and also art exhibition. So uh, we have uh, more than 32 uh, employer. So it's difficult that when is everything is stopped. So what I try and uh, I start a GoFundMe also uh, friends from all over the audience to supporting GoFundMe. And I start the first time uh, a live concert. Uh, so try to pay for 32 uh, artist employer is very hard. And also more than 80 artists, 80 artists, I start uh, they performing. So that means we did uh, one eight, 18 uh, concerts, uh, three uh, exhibition for six artists. We did this COVID. Uh, time and so at the same time we give awareness for our people and the same times we fighting with government like uh, something fun for artists we try our best but um, uh, and, 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 and in terms of the because I remember being in your space Fendika the, the, yeah. the culture club it's I mean, there are many spaces in, in, in Addis Ababa, but your yeah. space as Fendika is, is, is unique in a way it brings people together. You know, you enter and they give you these instruments and you chant with the women and men there. They teach you the dances, the, the songs. 
Uh, yeah. In terms of the venue, is the venue open? Are people able to access it or because of COVID, you, you, you've, you've locked it? It's closed for seven months. Okay, and, and, and how are you dealing with that? You know, are you able to, in terms of the, the, the venues that host uh, arts and culture, uh, culture activities in, in Addis Ababa or in Ethiopia as a whole, how is that? Uh, all, all is closed, that's what I mean, it's closed. And uh, so we start without audience, we start uh, live concert streaming. And so uh, more than 80 artists, 80 artists performing this seven months. And uh, we paid also for 32 employers with GoFundMe uh, friends all over uh, the world supporting uh, to uh, saving the artist uh, life. And uh, so uh, we is closed and uh, yeah, uh, very difficult time. And uh, uh, there is no, not only Fandika and all the artists uh, shut down. And also we cancel more than 27 concerts all over the world. We don't travel. And but some uh, festivals, we did a live stream from here. If they cancel, they like US in Europe, we did live stream and uh, uh, amazing supporting. Also, Roskilde, they are amazing uh, support. Of course, uh, uh, Visa for Music, and amazing uh, also to communicate. Always. And, uh, and, with, uh, and, and just to, um, as we wrap this up uh, to move to the other panelists. I just wanted to know uh, just two things. One is uh, from what you're saying, you're more using the online, you know, uh, means yeah. to communicate and to share the art um, with the people out there. Uh, and Ethiopia is very, uh, is well known for its censorship because government controls the internet. Uh, so how has that affected you, the censorship and the blocking of the internet uh, every now and then, and then the instabilities that are happening? You know, I just heard that, you know, they want to bomb the Afar region or Mekele or, you know, how, how is yeah. all that, how are you dealing with all, all of that? Yeah, it's, uh, that's what I, you know, uh, so when we start uh, recovering from COVID and by internet, because of the uh, complex also in the local, local uh, uh, war, like civil war almost, the internet is shut down. And now the, it's difficult again. And when the internet is open, we start like before one month ago, uh, we open nightclub again. Uh, our now, right now is war, almost civil war in uh, like North Ethiopia. And so, People are afraid not to go out. Uh, we are open. So still we try our best. And uh, because uh, mostly they rent the place, uh, difficult, they can't survive. Now, Fandika, I bought it. So I don't have any uh, house rent. So all what I have, and I invest, I invest for that and uh, we continue. And also now, right now, even this war, civil war, people coming to uh, uh, meditate and expression, artist community, and uh, amazing audiences, Fandika families. That's why we survive. Perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Melago. Thank you. And uh, now I would like to move to Durban to hear from Gabriela. Uh, what, how, is everything going with uh, Ilifindo? Uh, your work, I know that I've been following and seeing the opportunities that you're putting out there for creatives within South Africa to jump onto and get involved, you know. Um, how are things for you uh, in terms of the landscape, the artists that you serve, uh, your activities, yeah. Thanks, Herman. Um, well, I think a lot of us are on the same boat that this um, has impacted, I think, the creative industries and the, the arts and culture industry probably very, very hard. Um, we've, we were hit very hard in South Africa because we had a very hard lockdown. Um, 
so all venues were shut, all clubs, all those sorts of things. Um, but you know, not just the artists. So there are these various platforms that we are looking at, such as the online streaming. But um, we've also been looking at the back end. Um, what's happening to the people that are freelancers that normally work at festivals and they are not the artists, so they're not able to um, live stream something or create that sort of profile for themselves. Um, we've already in Durban have a problem with the fact that um, we don't have many live music venues. Um, we have moved quite into sort of a big, large stage um, sort of city. So we build a stage, it's up for three days and then it goes away. Um, so the small venues are really suffering and that's one of the things that we're trying to work on right now is find opportunities, funding and things that we can maintain the little bit of live venue um, spaces we have, um, as well as looking at more building connections, um, creating platforms where we can communicate all the different types of funding that is out there for um, artists and for freelancers and various different um, institutions. There are a variety of different organizations and government that offer that, but often it's confusing and it's not uh, straightforward. So our goal is how as a community, can we work together to make sure that people can actually access the funding that's available. Um, a lot of the stuff that we're working on is uh, maybe not as much as live streaming and online, but more the back end um, the admin side of things, but also finding ways of when we're thinking about the future, what are the shortfalls that currently exist and what are the opportunities? Um, and I think in Durban, there's a very interesting opportunity of around our audience. Our audience in uh, Durban is quite fickle. They're not very adventurous. So they stick to certain genres or certain styles. Um, they, they kind of stick to certain areas, whereas I think because of the lockdown, there's this hunger or this curiosity that has started coming out of people, because they're, they're wanting things, um, that I think if we could tap into that at the moment, once things ease up, we could actually redevelop and reinvigorate how our audience engages with content. And that's the aspect that I'm currently trying to sort of play around with and how do we sort of cross-pollinate different spaces with different things so that, you know, we can have a, a larger array, um, you know, like we've done with Sekifo um, around the musical selection that is showcased. So a lot of the stuff that I'm working on is more sort of in the back end and really just um, trying to support um, the amazing talent that we have. And I think we're building very strong community. One thing that has come out of this, um, there used to be a lot of sort of infighting, um, even just within the sound companies. And there's sort of individual movements that have started happening when people realize we're all screwed. And now we actually have to come together and we have to look at how we can get out of this because we are a community and we have to do it together. So that more isolated, you know, I'm in it for myself has sort of vanished, which maybe is a silver lining, I don't know, but I'm, um, I'm trying to be quite optimistic and positive of what, how we can push this forward um, as we start going out of the sort of COVID space. And I just hope that we can um, maintain the momentum of community um, support and also just acknowledge the amazing talent that we have. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Gabriella, um, for that contribution. Um, Mike, you had your hand up. Do you want to uh, add something? Mike, are you there? Okay, as we wait for Mike, let's uh, hear from Shabani Ramadani. Um, yes. Uh, Yes, welcome, uh, Shabani. Um, I would like to know, uh, or we would like uh, to know or to hear from you, how is everything going for you uh, as an artist, as a musician, as a bassist, and also how are you 
fairing with the Marahaba Music Expo in Bujumbura. Uh, is Bujumbura open for business uh, events happening? Uh, how is it going for you? And I know that you're Tanzanian and Tanzania looks like there's no COVID. Well, Tanzania declared that they don't have COVID. They don't wear masks. Uh, there was a festival a few weeks ago. There's another festival, Ongala, happening in December, I think on the 5th or 15th, something like that. So how are things going for you in Bujumbura in Burundi? Okay, thank you very much, Alan, for this opportunity. Yeah, okay, well, first of all, I thank God. Marhapa this year is already, uh, we are already, uh, done because marhaba is happened before covid coming marhaba this year is happened 30, 31st january 2020 this year yeah after that for my side like a musician but in bujumbura i think the government is closing the all entertainment place the concert then like uh, three months or four months like that and then the old artist is struggling a lot because if you know in in africa the the government don't give the artist some funds like that but so now everything's okay in bojumbura everything is going okay everywhere the the concert happening yes in now right now we are okay and the music industry is continuing yes yeah and just to 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 know um what is the political situation there because i know that has affected um you guys in several ways you know it still happens that for someone to go to bujumbura or to burundi they wonder am i safe is there war is, is, is there stability you know what is what is the current uh, situation or environment right now okay right now in burundi everything's okay and the political situation is stable i tell you everything's okay and now we're in the preparation preparation for the our next edition Marhaba Music Expo 2021 the I think uh, no worry about uh, the situation of Burundi everything's okay no are the political situation is stable and and uh, and uh, how do you see the expo happening in 2021 is this going to be physical or is it going to be virtual? Um... Okay, the Expo 2021 is going to be physical because now the preparation we starting and we planning, I think now calling for artists is already in our website. And, and then we inviting, we hopeful this COVID in is going soon we invite <laughs> everyone we invite everyone we invite the world to coming in bojumbura 30 to 31st july 2021 to celebrate the life of music and musician around the club yes um okay thank you very much i like uh the zeal and the courage, you know, it's, it, it, it's, I mean, it's coming from a Tanzanian and you guys have declared yourself COVID free. I don't know how you did it, which vaccine you got. Probably, definitely it's not from Pfizer or Madonna, but it's still magic, <laughs> you know. Um, anyways, um, thanks very much. Is Mike uh, back online? Thank you, Aman. You're welcome. Uh, as we wait to hear from Mike, um, I would like us to move to uh, 
again back to Durban and hear from Philip uh, Sitole. Welcome, Philip. Uh, as the current deputy city manager of Etaquini municipality, um, I would like to know the difficulties that you faced with currently and those that you've been faced with in the past uh, and the measures or means you've put in place uh, to overcome those difficulties. And I know that you and Gabriella come from, a, from a, an environment that is slightly different from what we have in Uganda or what uh, Shabani has, you know, Shabani just spoke of, uh, actually not Shabani, but Melaku just spoke of uh, African governments not supporting the arts and culture that much. But I know that you as uh, South Africans have received and continue to receive much support from uh, your governments uh, to support arts and culture. So what difficulties are you faced with, even with that uh, uh, being availed to you and how are you dealing with those difficulties? Welcome. Well, good afternoon and good afternoon to all the panelists. Well, the city of Teben is a, a city that is number one when it comes to domestic tourism. And we are one of the cities within South Africa um, that attracts a reasonable number of foreign uh, tourists uh, that would come to Teben. Now, the problem that we are currently having um, is that um, from level five up to at least uh, level two, tourism was shut down. Um, so there was no traveling allowed. A bit of traveling was allowed under level three, but things started to improve under level two. Now, if you use months, I think there was about four months where there was no travel. Um, <clears throat> so that affects some of the platforms that we use to market the city. Uh, it has a direct negative impact on some of the platforms that we utilize um, to market the city or to entertain uh, locals and, 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 and visitors to the city. So we have been a leading city when it comes to the hosting of events, both uh, local and international events. So when COVID started, uh, then that meant that uh, the majority of um, performing artists were not utilized. They have no income. Uh, they had no income because there were no events. Clubs were, were closed down. Um, restaurants were not operating, uh, public spaces that are normally utilized uh, for performances uh, were closed. So the industry got affected, mainly the music industry um, and others that are in the creative space because we could not um, do shooting of films, um, you could not um, go to the beachfront and sell um, your, your craft work. So it was a huge, 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 huge blow for, for people in the creative space. Now this blow was not because there were, there were no funds available to support events, but it was because we can't do, we can't do events. Um, but as, as, but Tepen then decided to, um, to, to, to utilize this vacuum um, because more, many people were now glued on TV, uh, watching TV, but people are not going to work, they had nothing to do, so they must watch TV. So we then started a campaign to market the city, um, to create interest that when we reach the right, the right levels, people must consider Deppen as their first stop. Um, so what we then did was to work with artists um, in promoting certain experiences 
and products uh, within the city, uh, using artists to tell a story about the city, about the city, about the product, or about a certain service. Um, so we, we, we use quite a number of artists, but we've got, I mean, there, there are too many, uh, but there was a, 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 an allowance it was given to um, the artist that we would utilize um, for, for products. So if you look at the, what we were doing and what was also done by the department responsible for arts and culture in the city, I can safely say that we supported maybe close to two or 300 uh, artists uh, during that period, but it was not enough um, because it was a once off kind of a setup. Um, we are now at level one, uh, we're back in terms of tourists, we have seen numbers of people visiting the city increasing, but events are still not allowed. You can't do events that will attract more than 500 people. So for many outdoor events, for them to be profitable, um, they are talking about thousands of people coming to the event. So because of that, events are still not allowed. Um, last point that I would like to make is that as urban tourism, there are um, uh, 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 there's what we call activations. You know, um, we work with artists to do small activations uh, in certain uh, precincts, uh, um, uh, 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 corridors and precincts for tourism. Uh, we work with artists to promote uh, such precincts and such um, um, corridors. So this has worked for the city because it has increased the number of visitors um, coming to the city. Um, in a, so we, as a destination, um, the numbers of tourists and visitors is increasing. People are coming back in big numbers, but musicians are still suffering because they can't perform. And even when you enlist them, uh, you, you pay them an allowance. I mean, a guy that maybe is supposed to get 100,000 per gig, uh, maybe you'll be getting 8,000 or 10,000. So it is tough and we're hoping that um, in the near future, uh, maybe numbers uh, would, be, would be increased. Uh, I mean, instead of 500, maybe they go up to maybe a thousand or so, but it's still tough because uh, we are still having a high rate of um, COVID infections in the country. So if I may jump in right there, uh, in terms of support, because I know uh, you have spoken about supporting artists and uh, Gabriela uh, just mentioned uh, what they're doing also with various stakeholders within the, the sector, but more on the back end, you know, trying to deal with all those people that, you know, make the magic happen, what is happening to them, how do you unify those people, and if by mentioning that you managed to work with about, uh, I think you mentioned about 300, artists uh, doing uh, activations and campaigns and all these activities. Uh, my question uh, to you, or rather trying to find a solution around this is that when COVID hit, as much as governments wanted to support, there wasn't one database for people to uh, plug into and help artists, you know, there's no, uh, like in Uganda, we do not have that as much as we have all these artists unions and all these artists associations. We do not have one data bank that has creatives that government would go to and say, we have two trillion that we want to pour into the arts and, and culture sector to help these practitioners. So this is the money so that we can start giving money to each and every individual. So even if you had two trillion or one billion, uh, for the artists in Durban, for the creatives in Durban, how do you distribute that? So I wanted to know, what is the system like uh, for you currently? You know, if you wanted to reach all the artists or all the creatives in Durban, is that possible? Or you would have to go out and call 
uh, put out a call and then try to see who is doing what? Yeah, well, artists uh, in Deben or in South Africa, they, they do have associations. And I know that the national minister um, did set aside a fund um, where artists were expected to, to, I mean, to tap into. Uh, but the process was so formal. Um, I know that some of the artists uh, have a problem to follow that process uh, because maybe you require a consultant to help you. As artists, all that they are concentrating on things that they've been doing over the years is to compose, um, is to write, is to produce, and is to perform not to write for sponsorships or to write for grants, uh, requesting money for grants. So the, the system that was put in place, um, according to some of the artists, was not user-friendly and others, they did not even attempt um, to, uh, to apply for such funding. So the money was kept with government. So people would apply from, uh, would, would, would apply from a government uh, department. It was not given to a, some uh, to an organization or a trust that represents an artist. Maybe the other problem with artists is that they've got too many associations and they, those associations at times, um, they don't support one another. So government had to keep the money within its coffers and whoever wanted to access that funding, which was not enough. Now, when it comes to Deppen, which was not enough and people could not, not, not all of them could access that. But when it comes to Deppen, uh, uh, Deppen did not have a grant for musicians or the state, which we call it a province here, which yeah. is Guazul Natal, did not have a grant that was set aside for artists um, or a fund that was set aside for artists. So even us as the city, we didn't have it. And up until now, we don't have it and there is no intention to create one. Um, <clears throat> now, the, 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 so artists could not apply for any relief fund from us, um, except that the city spoke with departments um, that normally utilizes artists to continue to utilize them where possible um, for promotion of whatever, you know, you can, work with artists uh, to give a message that is against gender-based violence, you know, because artists are, they've got followers. So if you have such a campaign, you, I mean, you can bring them on board because of their following. But there was, there was never a, um, a, a grant that was set aside for them. And they, as now we are approaching to its time, we'll be in the festive season. And festive season in Devon is big. That's when you start to see even more people coming to the city. Uh, but because of the, the, the quotas that have been put in place uh, in terms of saying you can't have more than 500 on the outdoor event. So departments that would normally support events, they have already indicated that they're not going to support any event during festive because they'll be contravening the, um, the, the state of emergency from um, which is pronounced by national government. So we don't have, we're not going to be supporting events uh, because it, 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 it doesn't make sense for, for the event organizer um, to have 500 people in an event where they're spending maybe four or five, five million rands. So the cost benefit analysis tells you that it is not viable. Um, <clears throat> so the, the, the tough life that is being experienced by artists is going to be even tougher during the next period. Um, but it all depends on communities at large to make sure that the infections are kept as low as possible so that we can start to go back to normal life. Thank you very much, Philip, for um, the submission. Gabriela, you had your uh, hand up. I um, just to follow up on some of the things that Philip just mentioned. So, yes. 
Um, I think, as you mentioned, in the process can be quite daunting for an artist to be able to apply for funding and certain requirements that you, would, you had to prove that you had been booked for the last X amount and get letters of cancellation and there was this whole series of things. But also mm -hmm. doing work with the city, um, or most cities in South Africa can also be quite challenging for artists because they have to be registered on the city database. So they, if they want to be paid by the city and it only takes 30 days to get paid by the city, um, you would then have to go via somebody if you're not on the city database, if you don't have a registered company, which causes a lot of, um, I think, headache along the way. Um, one area where I think around certain things not being viable, what I would disagree with in regards to Durban, I think if we had a access to smaller venues so yes it's not viable to do a ginormous concert with two stages and where you are spending five million um rand or more because you're flying an international artist or you're getting a casper nervous for you know however much that is but when we're talking about local industry and we're talking about local support and local artists smaller venues um, where you're actually starting to look at your audience, your local audience that is hungry, that wants to go out and do something, you are able to then have a venue that ha can house about 200 people and it can be viable. It can be viable for the venue and it can be viable for the artist that is a localized artist that doesn't have to have travel and a huge hospitality rider or technical rider. Um, so I think there are new ways that we maybe need to look at how we engage with our artists and what are the platforms we enable in our current sort of situation, which that's what I'm excited about that's coming out of these discussions is new ways of thinking, new ways, opening conversations and really trying to find, um, you know, we're, we're never going to go back to normal. <clears throat> Let's all be realistic. Our normal has changed and it will forever be changed. But how can we make this new thing something that we've grown from, we've learned from? And I think there's, there's a lot we can get there. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, um, I appreciate that contribution because uh, you're speaking from a point where COVID is endemic as opposed to many people thinking that this is a pandemic as we wait on Pfizer and Moderna to avail the vaccine probably uh, Feb or March, which is going to start with medical practitioners anyway, not us as the uh, other essential workers and non-essential workers. But just to quickly touch on this, because uh, I know you said you work more on the back end or with those other practitioners. Um, I just wanted to know what is the, their reality? Because with COVID hitting, uh, it's clear that for each and every country, uh, the arts and culture sector is the first to be affected and it's the last to be thought about or thought of, you know, what is the situation for you guys? Um, well, I think currently in Durban, it's, it's quite hard because, you know, uh, when one thinks of a festival and one thinks of the creative, you know, the first thing one thinks of is the artist that's on stage that's performing. But, you know, for that to happen, there's a series of humans that come together to make that magic happen. And currently the support for <clears throat> those industries is, is lacking in South Africa. So, um, you know, you have your tech hands, your sound engineer, your lighting engineers, um, who a lot of them are freelance based. There's a lot of big sound companies that have now gone under in South Africa. Um, there's a lot of gear houses that have gone under. Um, so you're looking at this whole industry that's kind of imploding on itself. Um, and it has huge repercussions because those uh, those houses, I um, mean, they employ so many people and because it's it takes, you know, an entire army to put a festival together. Um, just, you know, people that are rigging lights. Um, same within the theater industry. You know, there's so many of the behind the scenes humans that currently aren't getting anything because they're freelancers. So they're not getting a stipend, they're not getting anything. So um, we have various different organizations like Lights SA Red, um, that have been working on doing food parcels because some of, literally some of the stagehands, they cannot feed themselves. They can't feed their families. They don't have enough money to go and buy milk and bread. That's where we're at right now. Let's just be honest. 
So mm. we're trying to find ways of getting funding, various different means, um, also working with national government to find ways of how do we create opportunities for freelancers, the freelance associations um, to make sure that they're also taken care of. Because if you now all of a sudden, let's think of this, if we don't have somebody that can make sure you sound good, we don't have somebody that's doing your lights. We don't have somebody that's setting up that stage. We're not, you know, we need that as well, just as much as we need the magic of music and we need the, the inspiration of a performer. It's all a uh, ecosystem and we need to look at the, the full ecosystem. So uh, it's, a, it's a trying time now for people, but I, I am trying to be as optimistic as possible, um, but also realistic and we have to do something about it. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Gabriela. And uh, let's hear from Chisoma Makunje uh, from Malawi. Hi, everyone. Yeah, uh, I'm Chisoma Makunje. So sorry for the delay. It's I, I was having some trouble with the connection and everything, but I'm finally here. Uh, yeah, uh, please, um, as an artist, uh, would like to hear from you because I, I am an artist myself, but being mm -hmm. a practitioner is, has kept me busy, you know, so even yeah. if the venues are closed, I'm still working, I'm still running things, I'm still programming, uh, so that keeps yeah. me busy. Uh, and as Gabriella was saying, and I think M Melak also mentioned this, that this is a difficult time for many artists. Um, mm -hmm. So how are you dealing with this as an artist? You know, because uh, we've had cases of artists having serious mental issues. Um, yeah. In Uganda, we have artists uh, abusing drugs at the moment because they're trying to run away from the realities that COVID uh, has presented to them. So. What yeah. difficulties are you have you encountered, and what means or measures have you put in place? Um, well, for me, it's definitely been um, a trying time as well, um, because you know uh, you don't really think about it until you get hit by a pandemic. That oh my gosh, like this is really how I am. I am supposed to survive. Like my craft is basically everything that's um, putting food on the table. So um, basically, it's 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 been more of not having anything to do per se, um, not having any uh, places where you can go and um, you know perform, and not having any plan in future because at least um, before you could know that okay so this week I have this um, show to play and then I have that show to play and then you're able to like plan but for now it's just really just sitting around and um, just trying to make the most of it. Um, it's, it is quite hard, it has been hard um, to adapt to the internet to using the internet also because um, speaking for my fellow Malawians it's the internet has never really been something that we considered as um, a very powerful thing in terms of um, entertainment. So as far as virtual concerts and things like that, we have tried to have those and we have had quite a number of successful ones, but it's only a specific group of people who can afford to do that because it's so involving in terms of, um, as um, Gabriella said, there's like the lighting, there's, um, you know, the sound and everything like that. So for me, it's it's really been tough. Um, I, I have had a couple of online concerts, but I wouldn't say that it's been, it's been up to the expectation. So um, yeah, it's really, but then again, um, we have been trying, I have been trying um, and I feel like we're getting used, we're getting good at it. We're getting uh, more accustomed to the whole, um, you know, checking. We have to be checking um, online to see what's going on and to try and involve other people in your, you know, your work as well. So just just to jump in right there, because uh, yeah. and I'm, I'm trying to answer a question that came in uh, from someone that is watching us. 
I think that question came in from uh, Natalie, uh, mm -hmm. wherever you're watching us from. And she was, she is asking about the online concerts and shows uh, and mm -hmm. how, what the benefit for those are. So when you, when, when you say they're not up to expectations, are you talking about the number of people that are attending the stream mm -hmm. or the revenue that is generated from that stream, you know, because many people and, and some artists are getting this feel that maybe I need to be live to go live just to keep my presence for people to know that I have a new uh, song, I have new music, yeah. I have a new album, but is that making yeah. money and is it bringing you the numbers? Yeah. Um, that, uh, it's okay, it's, it's actually a number of things that's um, very, very difficult okay um basically i'm talking in terms of the revenue like there's there's really no source of revenue if you think like from my point of view um it's like we don't really have any channel that's like okay we're going to have this live um performance and this is how people are paying it's more of just people being there and just watching it for free and there's also the factor that um, you don't have the audience that you expected you would have. So you would think that maybe you advertised it enough. You would think that um, people know about it, but it turns out that when you check the views that you have, it's not as to what you expected. And then there's also the issue of the quality, because um, as I said earlier, there's need for um, good equipment to use for, for you know, the viewers to have good quality you know to have a good quality kind of show so it's really just like everything um it's just not coming up to um what we would like it to be as far as um we are concerned or i am concerned that is uh, thank you very much and and just um i would say just to mention this um because uh, gabriella was talking about how all those people that have uh in the sound and gear business are all sort mm -hmm. of operating at the moment and and yeah. for me this is uh this has been a year of reality check for many people mm -hmm. for many stakeholders including yourselves as the artists you know uh 20, 20, 2019 bc <laughs> before covid you know everyone sort of felt like i'm an artist i'm a creative i perform i make money it's fine and yeah. then come Jan, Feb 2020, that is when everyone was hit with the reality of saying, oh, I needed a, a distributor, I needed a manager, I needed yeah. an agent, yeah. I needed uh, some sort of ecosystem. And mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say is that I believe there are people in Malawi who have gear, mm -hmm. yeah. but Pearl is gonna take you uh, the courage that people like Gabriella have to say, how do we come together as an ecosystem and address mm -hmm. our issues and be able to help each other? But also, yeah. I wanted to know when you do these uh, streams, how are you doing the streams? Are you doing your streams on um, on uh, Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram? Because, uh, you know, mm -hmm. you see art, at times artists will, you know, do an acoustic session and say, oh, here's my mobile money number, please donate, please, you know, yeah. uh, support me yeah. to play more shows. And then yeah. you've also had artists that have used Zoom and they'll say, make a post and say, we're performing on this date, you know, uh, support us, buy a ticket, and then we'll send you the Zoom code, which you log in or log on come that time and watch us play. You know, so what what means are you using? What mode are you using to deliver your your performances? Um, as I said, uh, we I, I we're all kind of adapting to using the internet. Um, but like for me, it's mainly been Facebook and or Instagram. Um, I've only start I've only just started going into YouTube, um, but that as well is hasn't really taken off just yet. So there's really I haven't really done anything. Okay, so initially it was just um, me trying to 
create a, a platform where I can I can engage with my you know my fans and like my audience and stuff. So it wasn't really about the money until we realized that okay, this pandemic is here and it looks like it's kind of here to stay. So I wouldn't say until right now that I have had any um, concerts that I have been paid after. It's really just been just playing music. People just watch it and and we move on. But yeah, it is really true what you said that um, we have to come together as um, all because we're all victims of this. And I feel like if we did come together and try to find a compromise, um, we would all kind of find some sort of solution, you know, for the meantime. So yeah, that's definitely a conversation that could be started. Yeah, uh, and, 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 and yeah, I, I believe that, you know, because as Gabriella was saying, this is endemic. This is going to be here for quite some time. And yeah. even if we resume doing physical shows or physical live mm. shows, I believe that the, the, this digital sphere is also going to remain, you know, because not everyone mm -hmm. is going to make it to your concert or go in yeah. that hall or that pavilion or that event space that where you're running your live physical show. Some people would want yeah. to still remain home and watch that, watch your concert or your show, you know? So uh, again, it's how do we bring that quality, you know, because that also uh, impacts you as an artist, you know, for some of us that are programming, the impression that we get from your show when you're playing live in your house or that warehouse, wherever you are, determines mm -hmm. on whether we want to book you for a show or not. Um, so I, I believe that, you know, creating that consortium, yeah. you get the people that have the backline, that have the sound, that have the gear, that can, uh, and, and putting something together, you know, and say, this is for the artists of that region in Malawi, you know, and a band can come in or two every month, every week to then have quality uh, recordings that are going out to people, but also limiting that access and monet monetizing it is also important because you have to survive as an artist, you know, so uh, Zoom could be one platform, but there are all these other platforms that you can limit access and people can pay to receive those uh, codes. Uh, but also I wanted to say that there's a Ugandan uh, company uh, called Feza, you could check it out. It's uh, feza.com, F-E-Z-A-H.com. They are now, I think, one of Uganda's number one platform uh, that is availing artists with a platform to host their shows. And they've crossed out of uh, East Africa uh, to West Africa and to Southern Africa. So you could get in touch with them and see what they could do for you, you know, so they help a lot in pushing the online sessions to make sure that people buy tickets, uh, whether with MasterCard or Visa or mobile money and come that day of the show, you know, that I have the numbers, but I also have the figures, you know, because that's important for you to survive. But other than that, thanks very much um, for your contribution. We'd like to hear uh, from Mike, if Mike is back online it doesn't look okay like thank mike. you you're welcome as we wait for mike i wanted to throw uh, a question out to any of our panelists that wants to take it on and this is in line with culture uh, i've always had this uh, thought that culture is expensive as much as people think that culture is free and, and cheap, you know. In many African countries, culture is actually supported by foreign investors and donors, the, the people that support culture and arts. Uh, so I wanted to know what is the reality where you are in Durban, in, 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 in Addis Ababa, in Bujumbura, what is the reality there? Because COVID has hit. Those foreign donors are either going to cut budgets if they're already, <laughs> if they haven't cut them already. Uh, some people are going to divert their money to other sectors, even to uh, their own people back at home and their own creative uh, sectors and industries back at home. So 
how is the reality looking like where you are and who is funding the arts and culture at the moment in South Africa, in Ethiopia, in Burundi, in Bujumbura, in Malawi. So anyone that would want to go fast, uh, looks like Gabriela wants to go fast, please. Okay, I'll, I'll go first. Um, I think South Africa, as you mentioned before, we are quite lucky in regards to the sort of the support that we do get, um, both from our local government, um, but also international donors. Um, so we have, you know, the Alliance Francaise and the Goethe's um, and the British Councils, and they're all quite active in South Africa. Mostly, I would say in Cape Town and Durban, not as much as I would like them to be in Durban because we were seen as like the third city. So um, we're sometimes left out of the, the loop. Um, but I have started through some of the conversations that I've had with organizations is you can see that there's hesitation. So when we're talking about events, um, nobody wants to commit to something. Nobody wants to say, okay, for 2021, there's the plan to do this and this is the calendar and we're going to commit to supporting this program this way. Currently, there's a lot of hesitation. Currently, there's a lot of um, worry and uncertainty and I think we're all in a state of limbo. Um, so I think that's one of the things why um, having sort of the technology aspect is still a benefit, like you were saying, Herman, the fact that, you know, technology is going to stay with us and still keep us connected and I think in some ways it's a saving grace that we're we have that um, so that international donors still feel connected to us and are able to support us in other ways be it by training or online sessions or however um, but I think it's going to take some time to sort of redevelop and gain the sort of trust and the confidence of the the live performances and, and, and I'm asking this because this is, um, you know, it's, if, if we're to scale this down to music, even, you know, uh, we have artists that have for the longest time been uh, branded as the culture ambassadors, the culture artists, and most of those artists, are, those are the artists you'll find playing like live shows at festivals and doing those kind of tours. Uh, now with COVID coming in, you have many, private, you have the private sector supporting a lot of pop and mainstream artists all over, you know, be it in South Africa or in Uganda or in Kenya or Tanzania, wherever, to do these shows. Like you see a main a mainstream artist or pop artists and they're doing a live show and they're sponsored by a, te a telecommunication company or a brewery in South Africa, but not your artist that plays the Akogo Marimba that you used to see playing live on the festival. So you speaking about the people that run the sound and gear business in South Africa going down, I believe that even the artists, that the culture representatives in South Africa, in Africa worldwide are going down because they are not being visible. Mm -hmm. uh, they have, they've always been a risk. People have to think twice. The private sector has to think twice if they want to bank their money on them, as mm -hmm. opposed to the mainstream and your pop artists that uh, have their content all over. Um, so it's, when I ask that, you know, it, it means that we have to again revisit what are we going to do for all those people, for all those creatives? How are they going to survive within that ecosystem that is being built? You know, yeah. But Herman, just in regards to that, I think one of, uh, and I'm just speaking, this is more just from my perspective within South Africa, is often we do not value our local content. We look at a lot of international stuff that comes in and we have amazing legends that oftentimes are more famous outside of the country than in our own country. And I think maybe that's something that now with everything that's going on, we need to relook, like how do we celebrate our, I mean, we're all coming from places with amazing talent, with amazing culture, with vibrancy. Um, that should be what we're holding up on a pedestal. 
um, that's what we should be trying to save and appreciate. And it shouldn't be that because they cannot travel internationally, they're now not going to be making a living, um, which is a sad reality with a lot of South African legends is currently they cannot go overseas and that's where they make their money is overseas. Overseas festivals are booking them and realizing the legends that they are. Um, but in South Africa or in specifically in Durban, they, sometimes they're, they're just forgotten. They're, they're not appreciated. So how do we use this time to reinvigorate the idea of our legends, of our culture, of our humans that we can be proud of because they're right here. They're, they're, they, you know, they're our sort of legends. So I think there's, there's a lot that could be done there and more conversation needs to be had about how do we appreciate our local content and our local heroes. Thank you very much. And to you, uh, Melaku, um, I wanted to know if you're new, because uh, I know you run this uh, Fendica uh, Cultural mm -hmm. Club. You run the Fendica Culture Club and you run that space where you are. And you mentioned earlier on you're having a show in about an hour uh, there. I hope people can jump onto your Fendica pages and get to yeah. plug into and watch the show. But I wanted to know, for such a cultural venue in the heart of Addis Ababa, how are you managing with this space, you know? And what are other people doing that own such cultural spaces, you know? Are, are they at a threat that they will lose the spaces? Because uh, I know that many people that are renting offices Offices and are doing culture work have had to close because they are not working and they can't afford the rent of those venues and spaces anymore. Uh, many people have had to cut their human resource or capital, lay off people and declare redundant their stuff. So how are you handling this? I know you talked about having 32 employees that you're working with or people that you're working with, how is the future looking for you early 2021? Are you seeing yourself still working with the 32 people? Are you still holding that venue where you have in the Fendica Culture Club? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's a very good uh, discussion. Uh, I think the, what I learned through uh, the process uh, art, the art you need generosity and also love and whatever coming to express ne never stop art whatever can become more strong and it is a world acting this is the reality world to see be generosity and give and so this way to save the culture and also for everything, for justice or for creativity to do it. So I'm expecting world to see this one, the generosity. This way I work for a long time. I give a lot and make me happy. So that setup become now community building. So everybody now as a church, like a church, come to Infandika. So that's why we continue surviving, giving hope. So uh, I see world to see this point and make this community system to build with generosity, to contribute each individual and to become that flat platform is bigger and bigger vision. And after that, we can do many things. So I'm working in Fendika 23 years and without any expecting, just express because my meditation as a dancer, as I, I grown up. And so this become whatever come hard thing. Still, I'm a street children, and many, many of you, you know my life story. But uh, uh, to make money easy, I can be thief. It's not about that. And to keep what you love is the difficult part. And so that you need sacrifice and commitment. So that setup give me this funding as setup. Now, Fendika is like a church. Every art community, hope, 
all uh, the public also peaceful from all over the world come to sit in Fandika, very feeling home direct. And so this way world I, I want to see. This is, I see the world in the future to see and, this point. And, um, and, and just to touch on Ethiopia, um, because the, the, the band is not touring right now because I mean, it's mobility crisis. Uh, how are you surviving? And just to bring back the same uh, question that I asked Chisomo, yeah. as an artist under Ethiopia and as a manager uh, or leader of Ethiopia, how are you managing this band? And I know you've done various online shows. Are those online shows generating income? that can help the band to survive? And what is the reality looking like for 2021 for you as a band, as Ethiopia? Uh, as a band, we continue now, you know, example tonight we have Ethiopia after one hour mm -hmm. and the people coming, uh, we ask entrance in the door. So that in trans and also extra the alcohol and stuff, that income go to 100% for artists. And so this way we try to be, now we are ready also to release album. And yeah, so what we sell local drink, like honey wine or uh, arake, we call it kind of grappa and or beer. And so that income, go to for the artist this way we survive and uh, this way also we right now after covid become down in ethiopia it's not uh, people start stop also the mask and everything because it's less but also we have war now uh this complicates uh, still is a big challenge but we try to fight with the art through the art and uh, always try to have solutions and uh, we continue i hope it's not closed 2021 because of covid it will become less we wish uh, after that we uh, life will continue this way with our hope and um, but today we try to be uh, uh, thankful because one thing we perform, we express our feeling with the creativity, what we feel daily life. That's helpful for that, thank you. And the other thing also, we continue uh, for income to have, to, for, to survive for with the family and uh, with the creativity, what we continue in the future. So this way we, uh, it, but difficult to decide to, for long to say something and we want to say thankful for now thank you very much uh, i don't know this is my yeah thank you uh let's uh hear from uh chisoma makonjo i think you had you had your hand up just go ahead uh yeah this is um about the when you asked about how we are thinking about how we're incorporating the um our local artists um, I definitely feel as though as artists who already have platforms, um, those artists who are already established or have an audience that is like vocal enough, if we were to um, involve our friends and like kind of, because I know of an artist here in Malawi who just started having mashups with a, a local artist who was really forgotten. Um, he, one of the legends as well. Um, he started to have mashups with him and just like really post them everywhere. And because he had the resources and the ability and the knowledge of how to do that, um, the artist has become, um, people have re, you know, revisited his music. And um, also adding, because I feel like in this day and era that people are looking for a certain type of music. So traditional, as much as this is not really something to be proud of, but um, if we are honest, young people 
or the majority of, of the population in different places would rather have a certain type of music. So I feel like if we were to take that kind of music that people already love, already want to have and incorporate the traditional into it to sort of make a new sound, I feel like that would also greatly contribute to them not con like being washed off of the face of the industry completely. So yeah, that's um, kind of a suggestion of what we could do um, to kind of involve everyone at this time. And, and thanks for that contribution. Um, it's, it is a yeah. great idea because uh, most of those uh, legends and legendary artists and all folks that have contributed a lot of amazing content uh, are deep yeah. down in the suburbs, in the villages, in their homes. Exactly. Um, you yeah. know, it's going to take some someone or a, a cultural practitioner within the industry, within the sector or sectors to go and research and find them and make sure that they do that um, sort of initiation, you know, to make that magic happen, you know. So if you can imagine, you know, some of these people don't know the new sounds that are being created, for example, within uh, Southern Africa, you know. Uh, yeah, so it, it is, you know, our role, it is your role to, you know, go find those old folks and, you know, discuss a, a collaboration, you know. It is your role as uh, Gabriella to go find, I don't know, one of those old folks and get them on a, on a, on a piano uh, track or gong track, you know, I, I'm sure lots of young people would want to dance in the club or uh, to such uh, collaborations, you know. Um, but just to, and thanks very much, uh, Chisoma for that contribution. I just wanted to uh, hear quickly from Shabani before we, say the closing remarks uh what your take is um yeah on that uh Shaban, you need to unmute yeah okay thank you very much Aman, for this uh chance okay here in burundi Three weeks ago, the government is organized the festival to all artists or traditional play the, the traditional instrument and the drums, everything in Gitega region to, to give support the all artists, uh, all artists uh, playing the the culture music, the traditional. And then I think so, we have to, to do the campaign because the artists uh, play traditional music all the time is, is going abroad to the festival. But here in the music industry, it's very difficult to get uh, performance but for here in Burundi is very difficult, is very different because the all invent to the government is already uh, drums to open the, the ceremony and the marriage is always the drums who play to open the ceremony everywhere. But uh, we have to invest uh, to, to the traditional music because all of the companies, communication companies, they don't want to promote so the, the culture music. That is a big problem we have. And for, for, for us, Marhaba Music Expo, we try all the time to, in our line up, to put the uh, different traditional musician and uh, and uh, the world music because it's become it's become is to mix the culture music in the if someone coming to see hip hop someone coming to see the 
the world music, when you see the drums there, you see the traditional music, we try to mix it. Yeah, is that my contribution? Thank you very much. Um, I think we're left with about nine minutes before the session ends. Um, and I would like each one of us to uh, make their closing remarks. But before that, I just wanted to make one uh, quick uh, clarification that uh, the festival is talking about in, in, uh, in Tanzania is uh, Ongala Festival and it's happening at uh, Kawe Roundabout uh, Marengo, Dar es Salaam on the 5th of December. So again, uh, I would uh, call upon whoever is watching to, I don't know, study how Tanzania is doing this, how they've declared themselves COVID free, they're running festivals, you know, normally uh, as Ugandans, we are yet to fly in and see what is really happening there and why is it that we are not operating because we've been locked down in Uganda since March 17th, bars are shut, venues and what have you. So there's a lot of frustration and now we have a lot of political chaos uh, and demonstrations going on in Uganda. And apparently we've been allowed to run events of maximum 100 people um, and up to 7 p.m. And then we have curfew starting from 9 p.m., which is strict. So again, as we all close, I wanted to hear quickly from each one of you, if possible, in this uh, remaining uh, seven minutes, uh, you know, what is possible for you? And I know, Gabriela, you spoke about those sessions, that small sessions can be done uh, in those uh, venues, you know, whether you refer to, you know, small in regards to like a sofa sound setting, uh, because it's very tough for many people that are used to having bigger uh, venue, uh, bigger events with big artists with hopes to uh, break even or make a return on investment. So uh, yeah, let's hear uh, your closing remarks, starting with you, Jan, uh, uh, Shaban, sorry. Okay, for me, I start by me. Yes. Okay. Please. I think uh, uh, first, um, I say thanks so much to to Visa for Music, Mr. Abraham, for this opportunity. And I think, uh, and uh, and thank you very much for you, Aman, to to for this initiative to, to talking about uh, difficult situation we have in our industry, festival industry, musician, artist. I think we pray for next year, this COVID be done and we continue to to come back in our normal life and uh, and um, and everyone be happy, the musician because the musician is in affected to because it's not working or it's not all the all gigs around the world is cancelled the festival gigs is cancelled i think is the time to to pray and see what happened for next year but um, for me i'm continue to to the preparation for next year i take this opportunity to invite all of you in Bujumbura july to celebrate music international forum for africa and uh, 
Thank and that's thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Shabani. Let's hear from uh, Chisomo Makunje, and I would say I'll request that we keep it like a, a one minute max because we are left with about three minutes. Okay. Um, yeah, for me, it's just I have I'm thankful for the opportunity to come on here and um, talk about the situation that we have right now, and um, it's definitely been an eye opening um, session. I've learned a lot even though it was in such a short time and yeah i pretty much just want to thank every one of you for what you said because even if it was really small it really had some you know very interesting information that i took away so thank you so much you're welcome and to you uh gabriella um yeah also just a big thank you for me for having me part of this panel um but also i think just for me, the biggest thing that I hope that we can go forward with is understanding how we can create resilience. And I think the way that we can, as an industry, look at resilience is through collaboration and communication and building up our community and looking at it as a full community that is um, sustainable and viable and is well oiled. Um, and that to have that, we need to collaborate. We need to work together and we need to make this happen. And that's not just within each country. I think as the whole continent, we have an incredible continent and that's all, uh, I hope we all can still work together past this conversation because I think we need to all rally and we're all allies. We have the one goal that we're trying to do. So just thank you for allowing the to take place in this discussion. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, Melako, let's hear from you. Your yeah, thank you mind. very much uh, for this opportunity. I agree with Gabriela. Now we can keep it up to exchange. Uh, we never stop. We continue uh, where, wherever we are. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Visa for Music, Ibrahim. Happy to see you all the crew. And thank you all of you. And uh, we keep it up and all as much we can. So life is continuing. We love you. Yeah, thank you. And, you know, and let's hear from uh, Philip uh, Sitole. Yes, Philip, your closing remark. Yes, no, no, thank you very much. And thank you for inviting me to be part of this panel. Uh, I also learned a lot from this. And we it's a, it's a time when we have to do a new normal and come up with creative ways on how do we have a resilience um, spirit and approach um, towards saving um, the creative industry. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much. And uh, from myself, I want to say that uh, thanks very much to Visa for Music uh, having us and to the team that is working uh, hard to make sure that, you know, the audience that is watching is learning and receiving all the information that they need. I wanted to say uh, quickly as we finish in this one minute that, you know, Visa for Music is still running. Um, uh, yeah, so make sure that you tune in for the showcases and the other programs. And thank you very much. And we hope that come 2021, things will be better. Uh, hopefully a vaccine will be, you know, ready for to be administered. And most importantly, as most of you have said and Gabriela has emphasized, the idea and issue of having the ecosystem is one that is important for us to find a way of working together and staying together and putting the egos and the competition aside and finding a proper way of uh, serving each other as a sector and as the creative industry as a whole. Thanks very much. Thanks to Visa for Music. Uh, till next time.